Hello guys, I'm back after a long time and I hope you're all doing well. Today we are going to create a fishing system very similar to Stardew Valley's using the Godot engine. If you haven't played Stardew Valley, the system works like this. As you can see in the background, you press a button to keep the fish icon inside the green bar and once the bar on the right fills up, you catch the fish. It's actually pretty simple to implement, but I think it will be fun to do. So let's get started. First, I printed a fishing bar from Stardew Valley and split it in multiple sprites so we can use them individually. One for the fish, one for the empty bar, one for the progress and so on. Now let's create an assets folder to keep things organized. Now let's create a Node2D to be our main node. Inside it, we'll add a sprite for the outer bar, another for the inner bar, and one for the fish. Next, let's add the textures. I place it off to the side so it's easier to see when we test it later. And as you can see, the bar is already starting to look just like the game. Now let's add a groove joint to the node to connect the parts. This node connects physics bodies, so let's add the bodies for our bars. Since the background bar won't move, we'll give it a static body 2D and a collision shape 2D to define its area. For the front bar, we'll use a rigid body 2D with a collision shape as well. Let's drag the sprite of the bar into it so it moves with the body and then adjust the size. Next, let's configure the groove join 2D. We select the bodies we want to connect, set the groove size, adjust the position and set the initial offset to center it on our sprite. If we run the project now, we'll see the bar falls, but is held by the joint, exactly as expected. Now let's add some scripts to create the behavior we want. First, we'll make the bar move up when we press a button. So let's create a script for the bar. Basically, we'll check the input and apply an impulse. Really simple. And there it is. Next, let's create a progress bar that will track when the fish is being caught. For that, we'll use a texture progress bar node and add the textures for the background and the progress. Adjust the size to match the sprite and place it next to the fishing bar. Since we want the bar to fill from the bottom to top, we change that setting here, and now it works as expected. Now let's create an area 2D for the fish with a collision shape to define its size. 
This will let you detect when the fish is inside the fishing bar area. We'll add a signal to detect when a body enters, but instead of handling it here, let's connect it to a script on our main node. There we'll add a variable is on bar, which starts as false. When the fish enters, we set it to true. When it leaves, we set it back to false. Now let's add a timer. This will control how fast the progress bar fills or empties, depending on whether the fish is inside or outside the bar. Every 0.2 seconds the script checks. If is on bar is true, the bar increases. If not, it decreases. I'll use increment of 5, but you can change it to whatever value you like. And there we go, the progress bar is already working. Of course, here you could add conditions like if progress is 100, catch the fish, or if progress is zero, the fish escapes, just like in the real game. Now to finish we need to make the fish move, so we'll add a script to the fish, in it we define how far and how fast the fish would move. We'll also use the randomize function to randomize the generated values. At each timer tick, the function picks a random number between minus 1 and 1. Depending on the result, the fish moves up, down or stays still. We'll use a twin to smoothly move between positions. And to keep the fish inside the bar, we use the clamp function, so the target position can't go beyond certain uh, limits. In this case, minus 260 to 260. And finally, we define the move time variable for how long the twin lasts. Now let's run it. And there it is. The fish is moving, the bar is filling, everything is working as expected. You can tweak the fish's movement speed and distance by adjusting the variables to make it harder or easier. And that's it for this tutorial, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider subscribing and liking the video. Thank you for watching, see you next time!